Sun Si's conquests in Jiangdong were a series of military campaigns led by the warlord Sun Si to conquer territories in the Jiangdong and Wu regions, from 194 to 199 during the final years of the Eastern Han Dynasty. The campaign concluded with victory for Sun Si, and the conquered land served as a foundation for the state of Eastern Wu during the Three Kingdoms era. Background Sun Si was the eldest son of Sun Jian, who was killed in action during the Battle of Zhang Yang in 191 against Lu Biao, the governor of Jing province. Although Sun Si was 17 when his father died, he was already well known and was acquainted with many reputable men. In 194, Sun Si went to meet Yuan Shu, the warlord whom his father was subordinate to. Yuan Shu was surprised, but he refused to return the command of Sun Jian's troops to Sun Si. At that time, Sun Si's maternal uncle Wu Jing, the administrator of Dan Yang, was also under Yuan Shu. Yuan Shu then ordered Sun Si to travel to Danyang and rally his own troops there. Sun Si went to meet Yuan Shu again, with Yuan this time agreeing to return about 1,000 of Sun Jian's troops to Sun Si. Yuan Shu also initially promised to let Sun Si be the administrator of Jiu Zhang, but he went back on his word and appointed Shen Ji instead. Subsequently, Yuan Shu planned to attack Zhu province and requested 30,000 Hu of rice from Lu Kang, the administrator of Lu Zhang. But Lu refused, and Yuan was enraged. Sun Si bore a grudge against Lu Kang, because there was once when he visited Lu. Lu refused to meet him and sent a registrar to entertain him instead. Yuan Shu sent Sun Si to attack Lu Kang, promising Sun, it was my mistake to appoint Chen Ji, and now I often regret not abiding by my original decision. If you defeat Lu Kang, Lu Zhang will truly be yours. However, Yuan Shu reneged his promise again when Sun Si conquered Lu Zhang, appointing Lu Zun as the administrator instead. Sun Si became disappointed with Yuan Shu. Concurrently, Sun Si gained the support of Wu territory residents such as Ling Kao and his kinsmen, and pirates such as Zhou Tai and his gang. At that time, the territories in Yang province in southeastern China were under the jurisdiction of Lu Yao, who was appointed inspector of the province. However, Lu Yao only controlled the four commanderies of Dan Yang, Wu, Kuai Ji, and Yu Zhang, with Zhu Zhang and Lu Zhang not under him. Shouchun was initially the capital of Yang province, but as it was occupied by Yuan Shu, Lu Yao moved his capital to Que, Dan Yang. Lu Yao drove away Wu Jing, Yuan Shu's appointed administrator of Dan Yang. Wu Jing and Sun Ben retreated to Li Yang. As a defensive measure against Wu Jing, Lu Yao ordered Fan Neng and Yu Mi to garrison at Heng Zhang Fort, Zhang Ying to defend Dang Lai Kou. Yuan Shu appointed his follower Hui Qiu as inspector of Yang province, Wu Jing as military inspector general of the household, sending them along with Sun Ben to attack Lu Yao's forces. The Conquests Campaign against Liu Yao in 195, Sun Si requested permission from Yuan Shu to assist Wu Jing in fighting Liu Yao. Yuan Shu agreed and appointed Sun Si as Colonel who breaks and charges, and acting General who exterminates bandits. Sun Si initially had about 1,000 troops, tens of war horses, and hundreds of followers. When he reached Li Yang, he had rallied about 5,000 to 6,000 men. Sun Si's army then crossed the Yangtze River and attacked Lu Yao's base at Niluju, obtaining much weapons and provisions. Some time earlier, Zhu Li, the chancellor of Peng Cheng, and Zhe Rong, the chancellor of Xiapi, both led troops southward and supported Lu Yao as their leader. Zhu Li garrison at Moling while Zhe Rong fortified his base at south of Moling. Sun Si attacked Zhe Rong first, defeating him and killing more than 500 of Zhe's men. Zhe Rong retreated to Moling and remained in the city. Sun Si then turned his attention towards attacking Zhu Li but Zhu escaped. 
At this time, Than Neng and Yu Mi combined forces to seize back Niuju. When Sun Si Yi heard of that, he returned to retake Niuju, defeating Fan Neng and Yu Mi, bringing thousands of civilians under his control with his victory. Sun Si Yi advanced back to attack Zhe Rong, but was wounded by a straw arrow during the battle and was unable to ride on his horse. So he stayed in Niuja camp. To lure Zerong out of Moling, Sun Si Yi ordered his soldiers to spread false rumors that he had died of his wounds. Zerong fell for the ruse and sent his general Yu Zi to attack Sun Si Yi. Sun Si Yi sent a few hundred men to engage Yu Zi and lure him into an ambush where Yu suffered a crushing defeat. Sun Si Yi then went to Zhe Rong's camp, ordering his men to shout, How is Sun Si Yi? Ultimately, Yu Zi was terrified and escaped at night. When Zhe Rong learnt that Sun Si Yi was still alive, he immediately strengthened his defences by ordering deeper trenches to be dug and higher ramparts built. As Zhe Rong was in a strategic defensive position, Sun Si Yi abandoned the assault. Sun Si Yi defeated Liu Yao's forces at Hailing, conquered Hushu and Jiang Cheng, and appeared outside Que, the capital of Liu Yao's territories. Around this time, Tai Shi Si arrived from Donglei to assist Liu Yao, although his subordinates advised him to make good use of Tai Shi Si in resisting Sun Si Yi. Liu Yao was suspicious of Tai Shi and did not dare to let Tai Shi take up important roles. Once, when Tai Shi Si was scouting outside Que, he encountered Sun Si Yi at Shenting. Sun Si Yi was accompanied by 13 riders of good fighting capabilities, including Han Dang, Huang Gai and Song Qian. Tai Shi Si knew that the lead rider was Sun Si Yi so he rode forth to challenge Sun to a duel. During the fight, Sun Si Yi managed to grab one of Tai Shi Si's jizz but he also lost his helmet to his opponent. By then, reinforcements from both sides had arrived so Sun Si Yi and Tai Shi Si retreated to their respective bases. Not long later, Liu Yao was defeated in battle by Sun Si Yi and his troops abandoned the city and fled. After occupying Que, Sun Si Yi rewarded his men and issued an order to the people. Those who previously served Liu Yao and Zhe Rong will not be subject to questioning if they surrender. For those who wish to join the army, one man from each household is sufficient. Those who are unwilling will not be compelled within one day. Sun Si Yi succeeded in rallying more than 200,000 troops and 1,000 war horses. Meanwhile, Liu Yao and Zhe Rong retreated to Yuzhang. Zhe Rong used a scheme to kill the administrator Zhu Hao and take over Yuzhang. Liu Yao led an army from Pengzi to attack Zhe Rong. Zhe Rong was defeated and retreated to the hills, where he was killed by the natives. Hua Xin was appointed by the Han central government as the administrator of Yuzhang. Concurrently, Zhu Zhi defeated Zhu Gong and conquered Wu Commandery, handing it over to Sun Si Yi when he arrived. Zhu Gong escaped to join the bandit leader Yan Bai Hu. Campaign against Wang Lang in 196, Sun Si's subordinates advised him to attack Yan Bai Hu, but Sun said, Yan Bai Hu and his bandits do not have great aspirations. I will capture them later eventually. Sun Si then led his troops on a detour, bypassing Yan Bai Hu's forces south of Wu Commandery and proceeded to attack Wang Lang, the administrator of Kuai Ji along the southern shore of Hangzhou Bay. Yu Fan, an officer of merit under Wang Lang, advised his lord to avoid Sun Si since they were weaker in military strength than Sun. As Sun Si Yi advanced, Wang Lang moved to defend his territory on the line of the Qiantang estuary at the head of Hangzhou Bay. During his march through Wu Commandery, Sun Si Yi used the opportunity to rally support from his connections in the region. Sun Si's uncle, Sun Jing, responded and joined him at Qiantang. Wang Lang's army was stationed at Guling, where Sun Si Yi attempted several times to force his way through but failed. 
Sun Si then heeded Sun Jing's suggestion, arranging for his uncle to lead a detachment south to a river crossing at Jadu, and from there Sun Jing would head back to attack Wang Lang's forces at Galkian. That night, Sun Si then ordered his remaining troops to light the usual number of campfires even though they had less men now, so as to create an illusion that his army's strength was still the same. Wang Lang was taken by surprise and Sun Ci's forces were established across the river. Initially, Wang Lang attempted to organize a retreat and regroup his troops, so he sent his appointed administrator of Dan Yang, Zhou Xin, to hold the line against Sun Ci's attack. Sun Si defeated and killed Zhou Xin, causing Wang Lang to abandon his territories and escape south to Dongya by sailing along the coast. Wang Lang later surrendered to Sun Si Yi and was summoned back to the imperial court two years later. Sun Si Yi appointed himself administrator of Kuai Ji, reinstated Yu Fan as an officer of merit and treated him like a friend. By 197, Sun Si had already established a strong foothold in Jiangdong, so he broke ties with his former ally Yuan Shu and planned to expand his territory. In 198, Sun Si was promoted by the imperial court to the rank of general who attacks rebels and received the title of Marquis of Wu. In addition, Sun Si's younger brother Sun Quang married Cao Cao's niece while Cao Cao's son Cao Zhang married the daughter of Sun Ben. Campaign against Yan Bai Hu, bandits and the Shan Yu when Sun Si defeated Zhuang Lang. The bandit leader Chen Yu from Hexi proclaimed himself administrator of Wu Commandery. Chen Yu led his men secretly across the river, planning to ally with Yan Bai Hu to attack Sun Si. However, Sun Si sent two armies to attack Chen Yu and Yan Bai Hu at the same time and defeated him. In 198, Yuan Shu sent a messenger to Zhu Lang, a bandit leader in Dan Yang, promising to grant him an official post if he would oppose Sun Si. Previously, after Lu Yao's defeat, Tai Shi Si escaped to the hills around present-day Wuhu City. He declared himself administrator of Danyang and moved to Jing County, where he amassed a large number of Shanyu followers. After pacifying eastern Danyang, Sun Si led his troops to attack Zhu Lang at Lingyang and captured him. Although Sun Si almost lost his life in an earlier battle against Zhu Lang before he started his conquests, he spared Zhu and allowed Zhu to be an officer under him. Subsequently, Sun Si defeated Tai Shi Si at Yuangli and captured him. Sun Si freed Tai Shi Si and succeeded in persuading Tai Shi to serve him as a general. When Sun Si's army marched back in triumph, both Tai Shi Si and Zhu Lang were in the lead. With his victory, Sun Si pacified the six counties west of Jing and controlled three commanderies in Jiangdong. Around that time, Liu Yao had died of illness in Yuzhang and he left behind more than 10,000 followers. Sun Si sent Tai Shi Si to recruit them, saying that it was voluntary for Liu Yao's men to join him. Sun then asked Tai Shi how many men he wanted to bring along with him, and Tai Shi replied that he needed about 10 men only. Sun Si's aides felt that Tai Shi Si would not return but Sun said that if Tai Shi deserted him, he would have no one else to turn to. Sun Si personally saw Tai Shi Si off, held his hand and asked him when he would come back, and Tai Shi replied that he would return in less than 60 days. As promised, Tai Shi Si did return on time, bringing along with him several of Liu Yao's former followers. Sun Si breaking relations with Yuan Shu while Sun Si was attacking the warlords of Jiangdong, Yuan Shu was making plans to become emperor. Despite having been in Wainan for years, Yuan Shu did not make any great achievements. Instead, he oppressed the people and caused agricultural production to be disrupted. On the battlefield, he had also been experiencing defeats, but he still insisted on becoming emperor against the advice of his followers.
When Sun Si Yi heard that Yuan Shu was about to declare himself emperor, he wrote a letter reprimanding Yuan, reasoning the potential harms of committing treason. Yuan Shu ignored Sun Si Yi and hurriedly declared himself son of heaven. Around late 196 or early 197, starting his new Zhong dynasty in Wainan, Yuan Shu's action provoked hostility from other warlords and caused Sun Si Yi to break ties with him. The Han Imperial Court, which was actually under Cao Cao's control, issued edicts to Lu Bu and Sun Si Yi, urging them to exterminate Yuan Shu's regime. Conquest of Lu Zhang in the winter of 199, Yuan Shu's regime was crushed by Han forces and Yuan himself died not long after his defeat. Yuan Shu's former subordinates Yang Hong and Zhang Zun planned to surrender to Sun Si Yi, along with their followers and Yuan Shu's family. However, Lu Zun, the administrator of Lu Zhang, attacked them, took them captive and looted their possessions. When Sun Si Yi heard about the incident, he pretended to ally with Lu Zun by sending Lu Yu expensive gifts and showering him with praises. Sun Si Yi feigned inferiority and urged Lu Zun to help him attack Shang Liao, a region in Jiangdong that Liu already had been eyeing. Lu Zun's subordinate Lu Yi attempted to dissuade him from invading Shang Liao, but Lu Zun ignored him. After Lu Zun's army left, Sun Si Yi split his army into two groups to attack Lu Zhang. Sun Ben and Sun Fu led a contingent to Pengzi to cut off Lu Zun's return route. Sun Si Yi and Zhou Yu personally led 20,000 troops to assault Lu Zhang's capital, Wan Cheng, and conquered it swiftly, capturing Lu Zun's family and men and retrieving Yu and Shu's family. After that, Sun Si Yi brought the majority of Lu Zhang's population back to his territories across the Yangtze River, while leaving his general Li Xu behind with a garrison to guard Lu Zhang. He then returned to join his cousins at Pengzi. Liu Zun attempted to take Haihun by surprise but the people were forewarned about his attack and he was unsuccessful. Liu Zun then halted to fortify defensive positions near Mount Zizai, where he requested reinforcements from Liu Biao and Huang Zhu. Huang Zhu's son, Huang Yi, led 5,000 men and a fleet of ships from Jiangxi to support Liu Zun. Sun Si defeated the combined forces, capturing more than 2,000 enemy troops and 1,000 ships, while Lu Zun fled north to join Cao Cao. Conquest of Yu Zhang following his victory, Sun Si moved west to attack Jiangxi, defeating Huang Zhu's army at Shaxian, in which many enemy soldiers were either killed or drowned, and Sun Si captured Huang Zhu's family and obtained 6,000 vessels. Sun Si then turned south to attack Yu Zhang. He sent Yu Fan to persuade Yu Zhang's administrator Hua Skin to surrender, which Hua agreed. Sun Si treated the elderly Hua Xin, who commanded much respect, like an honored guest. Aftermath In the summer of 200, Sun Si led his army west to attack Huang Zhu again. Chen Deng, the administrator of Guangling, allied with Yan Bai Hu's remnants and attempted to launch a sneak attack on Sun Si's Wu commandery. However, Sun Si defeated Huang Zhu and returned to deal with Chen Deng, but his army temporarily halted at Dan Chu on the way back to await for supplies to arrive. In the meantime, Sun Si went on a hunting trip with a few men, but the men fell behind as Sun Si's horse was faster than theirs. When Sun Si was alone, he was ambushed by three former servants of Zhu Gong, the administrator of Wu Commandery, whom he killed earlier. He was hit in the cheek by an arrow fired by one of them before his men arrived and killed the assassins. Sun Si eventually died from his wound days later. Sun Si's younger brother, Sun Quan, inherited and expanded his legacy based on the conquered territories in Jiangdong. Sun Quan later became the founding emperor of the state of Eastern Wu during the Three Kingdoms era. Order of Battle